not as many people here. Because some of them have heard me read before, I'm going to read a bit. Gurton, who is our hero in the book, and he's 15, his past is told through a series of dreams that are kind of surreal and the impressions taking places in, in the more straightforward storytelling. In other bits. And the one I've read before that, that Stephen and you have seen this is where he meets his master for the first time and it sets up their relationship. <clears throat> and this is where he sees a kill for the first time. It's almost a huge moment in his life because he's, he's a kid, he's never seen like that before. This is a dream of what was. He's ten. He knows what his master does, but he has never seen a kill. He's not sure he wants to. But there is foreknowing in the dark clouds of the horizon, in the brown, crisp leaves whipped up by the wind biting through his woollen clothes, in the whispering bare tops of the stunted trees. Today, he will witness death. Master, are they people or hedge scares? He says, he trots along behind us. His master raises a hand to cover her eyes and stares into the distance. The long, golden grasses with heavy seed heads hiss in the wind. People, she says, come. She puts down a hand and lifts him up onto Zuss's saddle. Shade your eyes, Gurton. Tell me what you see. He does as he is told. It's hard to tell the difference between rag-wrapped people and the rag-wrapped statues believed to scare away the hedge spirits of field, forest, pool and souring. Mounts, master. Three mounts and a blood gibbet. Yes, she says. Words are no more than breath on the wind. Down, us, she says. And the mount hunkers down into the grasses. She doesn't want to be seen by the people. He doesn't need to ask why, so he stays quiet and counts as he has been taught to. One, my master. Two, my master. He loses count at 212, and eventually the people are leave and Zeus rises. Hold it up, <laughs> They make their way to the blood gibbet. It has been erected on the line where the grasses have roughly stop and the yellow land of the souring begins. Below the gibbet is a black mark where blood has been spilled on the ground. Green shoots are pushing their tips through it. In the gibbet is an old woman and she terrifies him. She is a sorcerer, and people like her cause the sourings. Maybe she will curse him or suck his blood to replace what she has lost. But she doesn't look evil, not when he looks closely. She looks old and pained. With a squeak, the breeze spins the wind vane, which lifts the brake on the slow way with a click that makes him jump. The old woman grunts as dirty blades are spun to reopen half-healed wounds on her arm, and she lets them let out a slow trickle of blood. Barbaric, he hears his master hiss. But the magic has to be reclaimed by the land, he says. He heard a landsman looking fine in bright green armour say as much in a village a year ago. Maybe, Gurton, but there's no reason it should be strung out so. Blood is blood, life is life. But why do they do it this way then, master? Gurton, when I buy you a bag of crispy pigskin, do you eat it all at once or do you save it and make it last? I make it last. <laughs> He doesn't understand what crispy pigskin has to do with anything. He would like some crispy pigskin, though. It is his favourite. Does that change the taste again? No, but it lasts longer. I want to savour it. Well, that is why these green riders do this. She points at the old woman across the road from then slides down from Zuss. Keep watch, girl, she says. Then he's climbing into Zuss's saddle and she is climbing the blood gibbet. Don't, don't hurt me. The woman's voice is a little more than a croak as his master hangs by her on the metal frame. When his master puts out a hand through the cage, the old woman flinches. I won't hurt you. She caresses the old woman's cheek. I'm not a sorcerer, says the old woman. There's no need to lie, wise mother, says his master in a whisper that all should hear. He does not know why his master uses it, but the old woman's eyes become wide. Free me, daughter, she says. I will, but I cannot let you out. You understand, wise mother. The old woman stares at his master and a tear tracks down her face, flowing along the banks of her many wrinkles. Then she nods her head slightly. You are right, daughter. Where could I run to? I am old and I will only endanger those I love. I am sorry, wise mother. Thank you for your kindness, daughter, says the old woman. And then her eyes become wide as his master applies the touch of sleep. Once the woman's eyes close, his master climbs further down the blood chip, stopping to slash the woman's wrist so her blood spatters into the dirt. He has been so transfixed by the horror of what is happening that he has quite forgotten to keep watch. What are you doing? A man's voice. When he turns, he freezes. A landsman, huge on his hissing war mountain, surrounded by the stink of rancid fat and rust coming off his grass green armour. A mount is far more dangerous than a man Gurton. You never face one if you don't have to. Beneath him, he feels us. 
Desperate to act, to rear, to bite, to scratch and fight, waiting for the command he is too frozen with fear to give. A kindness, blessed, says his master, but she does not sound like herself. She sounds meek and scared. It is not a kindness to interfere with a blood gibbet woman. It is treason. What are you? A sorcerer yourself? No, blessed. Only I knew the old lady from my village and she was kind. I, 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 no excuse! He barks as his mount saunters past us and the two animals bear their tusks at each other. Please, blessed, please do not hurt us on your boy. My mount, you can have him. His master sounds panicked and it freezes him to the saddle of us. He has never thought his master could be scared of anything. Please don't hurt me, please. But the landsman keeps on coming. I'll have the mount anywhere, blessed. I am not unattractive. She starts to unbutton the top of her jerkin, but she does not take her eyes from the ground. I'll not touch her sir. He draws a club. But you'll live long enough to water the land in the old woman's place. When the landman, landsman nears her, it looks like his master falls. As if she faints with terror, but the fall turns into a roar and she comes to her feet below the landsman's mount with her twin stab swords in her hands. She cuts the girth of the landsman's saddle and disembowels his beast in one slash. The creature falls, letting out a jumble of wet and red intestines and the most hideous screams ever heard. The landsman falls with the beast, but he has been trained well and jumps from his dying mount, clearing the creature which rolls onto its back, kicking its spurred feet in the air and screaming until the landsman silences it with a slash of his long sword. You will pay for that woman, he growls. I loved that animal. He comes forward with his long sword held loosely in one hand and his stab sword in the other. His master stands drenched in blood and with a stab sword in each hand. Her hair is black ropes, sluggish in the lazy wind. Mount blood moulds her kilt to her body and drips down from its hem to define the muscles of her calves and gore. She is black and red and so still she could be a hedge scare statue standing against the hissing leech. The landsman towers over her. Her breath comes in gasps like the snort of an angry mount. He brings his long sword round in an arcing horizontal sweep, short to cut his master in half. The boy is so scared he cannot even scream a warning. She moves, she dances. What is she doing? He wants to scream at her, defend himself, don't die. But instead he is silent as she goes through the iterations. He wants to show the iterations are not for the fighting. They are dances for entertaining drunks outside village drink halls and gathering a few pennies. They are not for facing huge armoured men. And he remembers. She laughs as she teaches him, oh girl, won't you impress the fine ladies? If he could move, he would cover his face. The landsman is dangerous, intent on death. Fury is in his eye and he grunts with effort. His blades move smooth as water. They trail streamers of light. His master goes into the fifth iteration. The boat girl dip. Something he knows so well. She holds his hand and twirls him under her arm. She takes his part. The landsman lifts his long sword and his master goes under the landsman's arm. She spins around him, deflecting a thrust from his stab sword as she twirls and then she is standing behind him at the iteration's end point. She is still... Legs slightly apart, hands at her side, and she's holding only one blade. The landsman, that huge creature of green and metal, slowly falls forward, as much a corpse as any felled tree. His master's left stab sword hilt protrudes from the unarmored place beneath the landsman's arm. She takes the blade out of the man. <laughs> then his master is running. She vaults up into the Zuss's saddle behind him, the stink of blood as she shouts, Ha, Zuss, ha! And the mount runs. It runs like he's never known the animal could. It runs so fast it seems impossible he can breathe. And the tears running from his eyes flow horizontally into his hair. And the world becomes a blur. Lines of colour and streaks of speed. And eventually, the world becomes a blur. And this is a dream of what was. Wow.